the truth is we really really miss our families and traveling the world is not like all it's cracked out to be like it's fun and it's nice to be able to do it in the first place but there are some sad parts of traveling and we're kind of experiencing them right now yeah so yesterday we got a notification from our american phone service that it's been 90 days since we left the country and they're going to cut off our plan if we don't come back if we don't come back to the us right and we aren't coming back to the us at least not yet so we cut that cord yeah. And it just kind of was like a symbol, like a reminder, reminder yeah, of yeah. how long we've been gone. So we left actually on your mom's birthday. Yeah, we did. And it was sad. It was sad because like it was my mom's birthday, but it was also like a bittersweet thing because we were going to Japan for like the second time in our lives, but we're actually entering Japan the first time we didn't. Yeah. But that day we actually, our families met up. So my mom got to see your parents, which yep. was like a really good, like little moment that mm -hmm. we had before the airport. And, and she got four happy birthdays from us. Four there, happy so. birthdays that day. <laughs> yeah, but we just realized like, man, we really do miss our families. We miss the food from home. We miss like just hanging out with our parents, having them come over to our apartment like that was really one of the highlights of our lives yeah. when our parents would just come over and my mom would just cook everything and clean everything after yeah cook and clean everything <laughs> after i don't want to say we took it for granted but like being away made us realize that we don't really have that like at our fingertips anymore yeah but we do talk to our parents every day but it's not the same, or most days, right. it's not the same as just being in their presence. The plan started off as us wanting to travel for at least a year and see as many countries as we could uh, before we decided to settle down and start a family. So that plan has been actually going well. It's been three months in, so we have nine months left to travel. And then oh. we have to make the decision of where we want to live. We kind of already have an idea of that and yeah. um, how many kids we want to have. And, <laughs> and just like general life stuff. But so far, since we started off um, with the traveling, we started in Mexico, actually. Right, that we, was stop number one. Stop number one was Mexico, and we had the most amazing time in Mexico. Like, I wish I was there right now uh, eating those tacos. How many Mexican songs did you learn in your oh time? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Compa, quiere palice zamora, la que anda bailando sola, me gusta. I can sing in Spanish, guys. Like, I am crazy about music. Just Everything not speak, music. only sing. Yeah, only sing. I can actually speak some Spanish. Bye. Adios, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Anyways, so we stopped in uh, Mexico first. We were there for two weeks. <laughs> cleared up some health issues that I had down there. I had a surgery. Me too. And he also had a yep. surgery. So that was a really successful trip. And then after Mexico, we went to Guatemala. We were scared this <laughs> in Guatemala. <laughs> that's, that's a nice way of putting it, but yeah, we were, yeah. that's a wild place. In Guatemala City, we were kind of scared. But then when we went to the outskirts, like um, Lake Atitlan, we felt much safer than when we were in the city. I don't know, too many dogs in my case, <laughs> but... Yeah. And then after that, we went back home to the U.S. where we spent like two months and we got everything together. We um, spent you know, time... two months, it was like two weeks, you know that, right? No. Yeah, we came back in like early July and we left by the end of July. That was two weeks? Like two or three weeks. It felt like two months. <laughs> yeah. My God. Yeah, so we went back for two weeks, allegedly. <laughs> And we got like good mom and pop time in. We spent the time with your parents at their house. And yeah. then we, I would go to my mom's to see her. And um, also my stepdad ended up clearing up his health issues. Well, he said like, he said that he felt like the cancer left his body. Yeah, to quote him. <laughs> yeah, but now he's doing much better. The chemo seems to be working for him. We found him an amazing doctor at the hospital that I used to work at. And like that guy is really, really good and like so much has happened since my dad he's settling in texas right yeah, he's, he's eating that um what do you call it the 
Waffle House. Waffle House, Waffle which House, I'm trying Denny's, to tell him to stop. IHOP and all that. Yeah. yeah. He's eating good over there. And I made him go to the doctor, test his blood work, and now the man's cholesterol is high after being in the US for only what? Like six months? <laughs> seven months so i told him mm -mm, we need to fix this so one more thing we truly miss is our car yeah uh, we haven't we just got a brand new car too well uh, not brand new not brand, <laughs> but it was new to us but we really miss the car and it's been parked in my parents driveway and i know my dad drives it sometimes for like his own purposes i guess we haven't driven in like over three months honestly you haven't driven okay i haven't driven in like three months <laughs> but that leads us to today's sponsor of this video trip Hey guys, I have to tell you about this awesome new product I found called Drift. So you guys know we already love Scentbird and everything they do and Drift just so happens to be Scentbird's sister company. Their products will make your car smell amazing at a really affordable price of only $9 to $15, which is really affordable. Here's what's really cool about Drift. You can get their scents as a monthly subscription. All you have to do is get a starter kit that includes a clip and a scent. Then they'll just send you monthly refills as it's recommended to replace the scent every 30 days. Which only makes sense. I mean, you want your car to smell fresh all the time, right? If you're someone who wants a different smell every month, Drift has got you covered. They have a new limited edition scent every month inspired by the season. My scent this month is Teak, which is a combination of musk, amber, pepper, teak, and cedar. I really like it because it makes the car smell fresh and nice and gives it a little spice. <sighs> Best of all, Drift has a very flexible subscription service. You can change your scent choice, how often you want new scents to arrive, and you can easily cancel your subscription anytime. Of course, we have to make sure that you guys get an opportunity to get in on the deal. So you can use code AVSIMMONS to get 55% off at drift.co. You can use the link in the description or the one in the bio. Hurry up because my knees are killing me. Once you order, let me know what scent is your favorite. I'm really enjoying this teak smell and I hope you do as well. Again, thanks so much Drip for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the rest of it. So far we've been to, um, like we said before, Mexico, Guatemala. We stopped in the US and then we moved over to Asia. But I think one important thing that we're going to be sharing towards the end of this video is how much money we actually saved by traveling the world as opposed to living in Jersey City, which will literally blow your minds. Uh, but yeah, so we, uh, after we left the US, we made our way to Japan and we just have to say that Japan is one of the most impressive places that we've ever been to, like Shibuya Scramble Crossing, the robot cafes. Oh, this guy even has a Shibuya shirt. Totally uh, unplanned, but... But honestly, you guys, will probably not see us in Japan because we noticed that there is not much interest um, in our travels from our audience we decided to just like not really post like those things that we did in Japan um, you guys saw some of Korea and it was because it was mostly about like our anniversary oh, yeah. and that was fun. yeah we were in Japan for two weeks and we had the most amazing time there and then we moved on to Korea honestly if you're black i wouldn't recommend it but no and i'm being all the way honest but regardless of that i had a good time in korea when i wasn't um on the train yeah on the trains i guess it was the toughest because it's like all eyes were on you basically yeah yeah uh but we to, to be fair, there is a lot of diversity in terms of like visitors. I feel right, like we no. did see a lot of people from all over the world in both Japan and Korea. But in Japan, no one cares. Yeah. In Korea, everybody cares. I will That's highly recommend Japan to anybody of color. Because with the Japanese culture, even if they feel a certain way about you, you will not see it. Because they just generally show respect. But in Korea, it is completely different, I would say. Yeah. They just show you their colors. And I don't know which one is better, but in Korea, I felt, I didn't feel comfortable, but in Japan, I felt very, very comfortable. We but, already can't wait to go back to Japan, honestly. Right, but I must say towards the end of our Korea trip, uh, people started becoming very nice to us. Like yeah. we were so freaked out by how nice the people were becoming. But when we just got there, it wasn't the case. Yeah, <laughs> some of them are just like blatantly like yeah. not for, people of my complexion um, and I want to keep it real because like I want other people that are traveling to know what to expect uh, people of color that are traveling to know what to expect when you go to a place like that Japan 100% Korea I'm giving it a 10 um, <laughs> All right. and where else did we go uh, after that we went to Thailand 
and we are in Thailand and then we went to Bhutan Bhutan you guys are gonna see that because like it's a place that we have to share with you it's literally like the most exclusive country in the world yeah. it's coming soon it's untouched like unscathed they have they have no preconception of like racism or anything like that it's it's just such a like I don't even know how to describe so it's it it's probably one of the most comfortable places most welcoming places we went to and they just see us as two visitors yeah. rather than like, oh, you look like this or you're from there. Yeah. They couldn't care less. It was the people in Bhutan, they're just so pure. And you guys will get to see that because we will be posting one or two videos from there because I feel like it's just something that we have to share. And then we're back to Thailand. So we've been to Thailand twice so far. And Thai people, I give them a 10 out of 10. I can't say anything bad about the people here in Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, people are very nice and welcoming and the food is amazing oh man they're kind of sick with the spices <laughs> oh yeah the spices oh my god like i'm jamaican so spicy food is not really that bad to me but thailand spice is a different level of spicy i'm telling you guys like this is no joke mexico got nothing on thailand I even think. in bhutan when we went to bhutan yeah. they eat chili for breakfast lunch and dinner and i'm not talking about chili powder i'm talking about chili peppers the red ones like they don't play and in thailand I don't think they eat it for breakfast. Maybe they, they do. They do. You know, we walked by this one guy making uh, breakfast one time, remember? And you have to wear like a gas mask because it feels like you're being pepper sprayed because of the spice level. Yeah. Like people wear masks and like goggles to cook their food. Yeah. Imagine what the food tastes like after, you know? Imagine what your butt feels like after. Oh, <laughs> Let me tell you this. My mom, I used to be so angry at her back in the day in Jamaica when she used to cook with scotch bonnet. Now, Scotch Bunny has nothing on me. <laughs> you could eat it raw compared to I that. could eat Scotch Bunny raw right now because yeah. of how much spicy food we've been eating throughout the countries that yeah. we've been to in Asia. For sure. But like, I must say that traveling is like a lifetime opportunity that I would never take back. Like if we were yeah. to do our lives the same way, I'd do it the same way again. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. Thank yeah. you. You're now, welcome. Guys, this is on camera. Remember this, all right? But <laughs> Why does it fit wet? Oh, it's just a little stress and sweat. And honestly, Bangkok is hot. Right? Oh, yeah. If you're somebody who's of my complexion or from my part of the world, it is very um, uncomfortable to live here. Because in, in Celsius, it's like, every day is probably like between 33 to like 37 degrees Celsius yeah. with like ridiculous humidity. And it doesn't cool down at night. That's the real problem. Yeah. Is like you can, in a lot of places, like even in Jamaica, yeah. you can open your windows at night, you get that Feel nice breeze. breeze yeah. Not here. You no. walk outside and it's like the sun is not there, but it's still high. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so weird, but... The AC is always on, except right now, which is why I'm sweating, but... Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we obviously wanted to travel the world and experience it, but like we are obviously very close with our families, which is kind of like why we're making this video to like remind everybody that like, yes, Thailand is amazing and so is the rest of the world. But Most we obviously, important, yeah. obviously, we want to see our family soon, and maybe we'll just come back and surprise them one of these days. Yeah, but if they watch this, it's not a surprise. They won't know. We won't tell them. We'll just show up. Yeah, true. The part of the video that most of you guys are probably waiting for is if traveling the world is cheaper than living in Jersey City, New Jersey, and the answer is a hundred percent yes. One thing we don't miss is the expensive lifestyle that we were living in the U.S. And I don't even think it's fair to say it's a lifestyle. It literally just was just like their life. expenses. Yeah. yeah. So in the US, we'd spend about like 7,000 ish per month on a good month, even though our budget goal was 6,000. Yeah. And we'd often exceeded like almost every single month. Yeah, we would AKA shatter the budget. How, do, how would you feel every time we do that? Angry. Because we don't, <laughs> we don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't party we don't really have social lives we literally would just go don't to really work go out, yeah. yeah we'd just go to work come home and just make youtube videos yeah. and um, go to your parents house or my parents house and travel and, sometimes yeah and if we'd spend money on anything it would be like oh let's go grab like some food for like 20 or 25 dollars for the bubble yeah, or, or something. yeah eating out yeah so when um somebody commented saying that oh you shouldn't go party you should be thanking god i was very angry because we don't party i was literally just making a joke and if you guys have been watching us for this long and don't realize when i'm when i'm making a joke something is wrong yeah so since we started traveling we started tracking our budget too 
Yeah. And it seems that we are saving a ton of money traveling. Yeah. So for like a month in Thailand, we spent about $30,000, mm -hmm. give or take, which includes Airbnb, which is like half of that. Grocery runs. Groceries. We spend a lot on groceries because yeah. we barely eat out because mm -hmm. we did not have a very good time one time when we went out to eat. No, it's not that's why we don't eat out. We're trying oh. to eat better because yes. obviously I had that health condition. And um, we're trying to look better as well. And what you eat is literally what your body presents yeah. on the outside. Yeah, so we're trying to eat as healthy as possible. And the food that you buy on the street is very cheap, but it's not that healthy. Yeah. So we try to cook ourselves as much as possible. And even, of course, we still have cheat days. But even with those cheat days, even us living on the road and like moving around, it costs about $3,000 for yeah. us to have like an apartment with peace and quiet, mm -hmm. with a gym, with a pool, um, with, I don't know, like yeah, we're living in a really com comfortable part of town that's like everything is walking distance for us. And we think that it's actually a very good deal and we could save way more money if we lived here permanently and right. actually sign the lease rather than do Airbnb. Absolutely. So. And of course, the, the argument could be that we made much more money in the US, which technically we did, right? We gave up like six figure jobs just to be able to do this and travel. But making more money and spending a lot of money is like the same thing as like making a little bit of money and spending a little bit of money at the yeah. end of the day. So it's really about how you like save and like manage your money at the end of the day and i think that with us stepping away from the u 